know, once again, to reiterate what we talked about earlier, we're extremely excited to have uh, Kendall as our uh, new Phoenix son. And uh, I also would like to reiterate that, you know, not to read anything into that with uh, what the roster is going to look like going forward uh, as far as free agency. Uh, as it relates to our board, Kendall was in the top ten. Uh, and like last year with Mark Keith, we felt like uh, he was a better player than his draft position. Uh, we spoke to him. He's very excited. He'll be here tomorrow with friends and family. Um, We'll open it up for questions. Also, let you know we did. We tried to very diligently tried to get another pick uh, all the way to the end, uh, including the last pick. Quite frankly, and uh, it just wasn't possible or to be tonight. But uh, uh, we tried all night long to uh, uh, to add to our pick situation. Who would have been the target with a pick, whether it be first round or, as you mentioned, even the 60th pick? There were a number of guys that, that were flying off the board. We, we had a list uh, that, you know, that we, we were looking at that were worth buying a pick or giving an asset up to get. Um, literally, I'd, I'd have to rattle off several names because what, what we would have then had to do was debate which guy we wanted based on which pick uh, we might have gotten. John, we, we heard from Lance earlier about Kendall. Could you talk about the things that you like and, like and possibly want to see improvement on? Well, for me, uh, Kendall Marshall it is a throwback kind of a point guard. You know, in, in the last few years, you've got the uh, athletic, uh, you've got the athletic uh, guys uh, that have come in, but uh, I think all of the Phoenix Suns fans have seen what Steve Nash has done over the years for us and shown uh, what a throwback point guard uh, does. And this guy is very similar. Uh, he makes his teammates better. And uh, that's something that when he took over as a starting point guard for North Carolina last season from the Drew kid, that's when their success really started. Um, myself and Lance and all of the scouts have seen him play a lot over the last couple of years, and, uh, and that's what he does. He, he helps make his teammates better and makes his teams better. Uh, Lance, a, a couple of times you, you said today not to read too much into you know what this <coughs> pick means for how the roster is going to shape up. I'm sure one question a lot of people are going to have is what does this mean as far as the future of Steve Nash with the Phoenix Suns, taking a point guard that it's a lot like him. You know, well, I, I certainly can't predict the future, but it has absolutely nothing to do with his status with this organization. Uh, we very well could have picked someone at a different position based on our board. Um, our position was based on the information that we have tonight and what our needs are, which is basically at every position. Uh, and we, I say that because we didn't make the playoffs, so we have to look at ways to get better everywhere, and this was an opportunity, uh, no matter what happens in free agency. And we talked about that uh, in the recent past, you know, who we should draft, and the goal was to stay focused on this pool of talent uh, and not allow if and, if and possibility, possibility situations in free agency to affect our focus on this draft because we just didn't want to miss out on the right talent. We felt like he was the right guy for, for uh, this organization at this time. Uh, a lot of times teams, there's a disconnect between the coaching staff and the you know, draft process. How involved was Alvin Gentry in the process of selecting Kendall Marshall and, and looking at the other players? Well, I'd say very involved. Uh, Alvin wasn't out scouting during the season, uh, as you know, which is pretty obvious as a head coach. Um, we did engage Alvin because of what you just said. We don't want there to be a disconnect. Uh, Alvin is, and to his credit, he's extremely um, respectful of our space, and yet he's there 
uh, for any input that we need, which we do need, because he is the coach and he's the one who has to coach these guys. And he's not afraid to step up and say, you know, when he thinks that it's something that may not make sense for the team and the organization. But at the same time, uh, he gets out of the way of us and, and allows us to do what we do, as I do with John and, and all of our scouts and analytics people. At the end of the day, you have to trust the people who have been put in a position to do what uh, their expertise is. And uh, Alvin trusts us, and we trust him, and I trust John and so forth, and Lon as well. So uh, we're a team, and we do what we do, and uh, make the best decision we can. Are there some underrated qualities about Kendall that don't get talked about that you guys have seen, you know, the obvious stuff about being a floor general? And Sees the floor, there are other things that go more and more unnoticed. Yeah, the one that's, I think it's obvious but doesn't get talked about, uh, that I think the, the best measurement for me for, for Kendall is he's a winner. And I, I, don't, I don't think you can talk about that enough uh, because winning to this young man matters. And the more that we went through the process, and uh, I woke up this morning honestly not knowing for sure who we were going to take or what John might have thought as we were continuing to get information and just run through the finish line with looking at information. And the one thing that rang true to me is this is a winner. Uh, the other thing that will be under, underrated, I think, until tomorrow when you meet this young man is he is special in every way. Um, the way he handles himself, he, he is a class act on and off the basketball court. And I, I don't think uh, you can weigh that too much because uh, in this day and age, uh, with some of the challenges that coaches have and teams have and potential dysfunction, um, this is a young man that'll be able to right the ship through difficult times. I want to say something about that as well because he's a, uh, first let me say something about the process. I, my job is to make sure that the process is sound and that um, we're doing what we set out to do and I, I remember saying this last year and having gone through it now for a second year I, I couldn't be more proud of the, the quality of the work that Lance and John and our scouts do uh, the analytics piece the medical piece it's it's uh, truly a, a, a team effort top to bottom it reflects well on the progress that we're making in that with respect to, to Kendall, you know, I leave to them the expertise on the qualities that he has on the court. But the one thing I know about is the qualities of a player off the court. I, so I spent my whole career surrounding myself as best I could. And this player is in the mold of the kind of player that I represented for 20 years from Grant, of course, Shane Battier, and Tim Duncan, and Ray Allen. And uh, if he, if the quality of his play matches the quality of the character, we've got a, we've got a wonderful player. And you're going to see that. You're going to see a level of maturity. And for me, we have to do what we say, which is to begin to build through the draft, but also to have players here that reflect well on this organization, on the ownership, and on the community. And that uh, I know will occur without hesitation as it relates to, to this young man. So we're excited to have you all meet him tomorrow. But um, uh, I'm proud of what he represents, and I'm proud of the work that John and Lance and, uh, and all of our scouts and our analytics and all those folks have done to, to get us to this point. So uh, those are my thoughts about it. I'd like to uh, piggyback something that Lon said. You, uh, you know, one of the <laughs> If you have a great process, uh, decision, the decision is not difficult. And in this case, I, I, I truly believe the process made the decision for us, which, which made it a little easier uh, than, than it would normally be. And there were some very good players uh, that, that were in this draft. I'd also add to that a uh, little, little short story. I'm 100% certain take that back, I'm 99.9% .9 certain that more than any 
player in this draft, this player wanted to be here in Phoenix. So if you look at the body of players that we had in here, didn't have in here, of all the players, he wanted to be in this city the most. Ironically, much like Markeef. Markeef, when we had our dinner last year, he proceeded to tell me all the reasons that he needed to and wanted to be here. There's something in that. There, there's a good vibe in that. There's, it's, it's good karma when you have players who want to be in your city. And uh, that went into uh, our decision in, in terms of uh, the quality of the individual, but the fact that he wanted to be here in Phoenix, Arizona. Why do you think that is? What made this such a good fit for him? Uh, I'd start with the people. We clicked incredibly well in, in the interview. Um, I don't know all the teams he went to, but I, I know he went to a small sampling of teams. Um, and I think when he came to the city, felt the vibe and the community, the environment around here. He came, he came here, had two workouts. Um, we had several dinners and conversations with him. Lon met with him, I met with him, John met with him. We had other staff meet with him. And I think he just went away, I know he did, uh, saying and feeling like this is the place for me. And when you have that, you have someone that's going to be fully invested and fully committed uh, to putting this organization in the best possible position uh, to win on, the, on that basketball court. Yeah, to me, it's like when, when you're all too young. When you get older and you take your kids on their college visits, uh, sooner or later, you arrive on the campus of some school, and suddenly your child or your, your young man or young woman looks like they belong, and they fit in as they walk through the halls, as they walk through the buildings, and you just immediately know they're in the right place. And that was the feeling, I think, that we had about Kendall when he was here, and I think it's the feeling he had about us. Um, and that, that's... That's a very, very important thing for us. It's part of what we're trying to do in building the culture. If he walks through the halls and walks through the locker room and interacts with our training staff and, and it feels right, then there's a much better chance that it is right. And uh, I think you can all enjoy working with him as we are in the years ahead. John, what were some of the things that coaches at Carolina will share with you about Kendall? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went down uh, probably a month ago and uh, spent uh, some time with Roy Williams. And uh, he's coached uh, a lot of uh, players that have come through and into the NBA. And uh, you know, he just feels like he's an assistant coach out on the floor. Everything that he's trying to do as a coach, uh, this guy goes out and tries to help accomplish that. He's got a great mind for the game. Um, so they, they were the Carolina people were very helpful in the process. Is there anything medically to flag about the, the fractures? Did they find another fracture later besides the ribs? The only thing I could speak to that I understand medically of talking to Kendall is that it's still healing. Um, and what, what we've been told, that there's no red flag or any issues. It just needs time to, to fully heal. And it's a lot better than it was a month ago. And, uh, and it just getting better every day. And we saw him in two workouts, so uh, it's just a matter of time. John, are there any current NBA players whose game you would compare to his? Or at least kind of skills-wise? Get great vision in the court, in the open court, and uh, he loves to push the pace of the game and uh, get the running game going. One thing that they've done a great job of, he's done a great job of, is uh, being able to push the break hard. And uh, obviously, he's coming into uh, our environment where that's something that we've, you know, we've all had respect for. John, to piggyback a little off of Paul's question, what are some parts of his game that you think that you're excited to work about and help him improve on uh, 
like defensively, I think he's an instinctual player, just not very athletic. What are some things you saw? Well, you know, when you start talking about the defensive end of the floor, I think so much of it is your team defense. Um, and I know uh, we've all made a commitment to try to improve on that end of the floor. Uh, Elston Turner came in this past season, and I think system-wise and team defensive-wise, we're uh, improving. And I think he will benefit from um, a solid defensive system in, in this league. The challenges defensively can't be handled just on a one-on-one -on -one situation. It's got to be a, a group of guys being able to stop your opponent. So uh, I think uh, you know, he's got a great mind for the game, and he will uh, make the adjustments necessary to find success.